Welcome back. In this segment, I will cover the bellows connecting rod, a new bellow, and adding heat sinks. For the bellows connecting rod, I'm going to put a bearing in it. This was the test one. I'm going to forego the idea of having it uh, be serviceable by have with the, the pins that open it up. I'm going to just drill it out to take, up, take the bearing and uh, put it right on the shaft and keep it there. I've remade the bellow one more time. This is going to be the, my final attempt at making a easy moving bellow. I've creased the seams back and forth many times before assembling it. And I also did put a little silicone before attaching it on here on the inside. Careful not to get it on the edges where, where, I'm gonna, where I used wood glue to attach it to the wood. Um, I did the hinge piece with the, the silicone rubber as well. And I made sure that I didn't glue the paper across it. Because I think one of the problems my other bellows had was I glued the paper across the bottom. And then that, that would harden and make it very hard for it to move. Because this is my final attempt at the bellow, I'm going to simply glue it right on. I'm not going to make my, app, uh, uh, my clamping apparatus for it and uh, see how it works. This is the attachment to connect the bellow to the connecting rod. This piece we just cut out here, that's going to simply go on the side of the final bellow. And uh, the connecting rod has multiple holes in it, so you can find the optimum position to attach it. Uh, so I'll just glue this on here. The final connecting rod is a little more refined than this. Once you determine the optimum position, you can cut this back a little bit. And the engine needs a, a little better heat dissipation on top, so I'm going to make three heat sinks that will sit in the little panels available. One that's based on a copper scrub, one that's going to basically use some uh, wire loops, and one that will uh, be based on a beer bottle theme design that's going to be cut from a flat plate. So the finished flat plate one looks like this. Once you have them cut out and bent up, you just slide them together, assuming uh, you may have to adjust your slots a little bigger. That came out kind of looking neat. I want the scrub with that. There's usually like a little metal piece in there. You take that out and you can separate it into a um, kind of a donut shape. What I'm going to do is that's going to feed on a uh, copper wire coming off the plate here. So we're going to assemble that one next. First I'll bend these tabs. These tabs will basically hold the bottom together. So start by bending those up. Once you have the tabs bent up, they're going to look something like that. We need to finish adjusting our wire here. So once it's in place, it may be difficult to adjust without bending the tabs. So basically I just force the tabs over the square of the wire on the bottom with a screwdriver. Now we need to pre prepare this piece. some light around to kind of snug it up on this and over the top to hold it down and uh, that's two down now the third version and honestly I think this one looks the best but uh, any of these should work so I wanted to give uh, a few different options depending on you know skill levels and this would probably dissipate the most heat but this you know clearly looks the neatest this one should be the simplest to make basically 
The interior has some tabs. And basically bend those over to hold these in place. So there'll just be some loops on here. Alright, the final one with the tabs. The loops look something like this. Um, obviously these all would hold together much better with a little solder. This one's just kind of held together with its tabs right now. This one holds pretty together pretty good with just friction. This one, a little more wrapping with some wire would do it some good too. Now with a little planning I would have made these ahead of time and solder them on to the lid. But as it is, I didn't. So we'll just set them right in like this. Being that it's all copper, it should conduct the heat quite well. well I've gone through some enhancements, remade the bellow, I have a, a finished beer bottle theme blade on the front. Not really an enhancement, but so and I made some uh, heat sinks. So we're just kind of testing the bottom range of the engine. For the most part, my engines I build them, and I like to run them on my wood stove. So between firings, we usually let the stove get pretty low. Um, now if we check, it's running fairly reliable. We at 224 degrees. Um, typically you're not going to let the wood stove get much lo below 200 between firings so that's probably with an acceptable bottom range on the upper side the wood stove rarely gets over 650 degrees that's a little on the hot side typically it stays under 500 so at the bottom range we're going to be around 224 here conversely the Phoenix engine and my older beer bottle engine that uh, use a piston instead of a bellow they operate pretty reliably around 150 degrees surface temperature so we'll just take this guy up now to something closer to 700 degrees, 650 degrees and see how it runs at that temp okay Here's the engine running at the upper temperatures that you're gonna you would get a wood stove up to on the surface uh, surface area. I'll just uh, double check here. All right. It's running about 630 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Typically, my wood stove we keep it under that, but it hits 600 once in a while when it's an overburn. Um, Things are a little wobbly around mine because I'm just holding it together with pins right now. I drilled some holes to hold the tenons together. Once I'm completely satisfied with the design, I'm going to glue everything together tightly like the, you know, but... For now this lets me disassemble, reassemble. Probably go ahead and uh, replace the other heat sink options with the uh, beer bottle shaped one because that just looks cool at this point the engine's running okay but I think there's several enhancements I can make to get the starting temperature under 200 degrees in the next segment I'll have a new piston design new displacer design and a few other modifications thanks for watching